Whether or not you are new to MLB The Show, one thing you will realize quickly is that there are a ton of different ways to get good cards. Whether you're an online player or an offline player, there are different avenues to make stubs and get good cards and things like that. So in today's video, I plan on going super in depth on this. I'm going to show you every different avenue you have to get good cards in Diamond Dynasty, all the different things you can do to get a good team in Diamond Dynasty. This is gonna be a long one, so take a seat, get comfortable, get a drink, whatever you need. Let's get into it. What is going on, guys? I appreciate you all watching. In case you do not know me, my name is Scan. We do MLB to show gameplay tips, Diamond Dynasty tips, no money spent tips, things like that. We're gonna do no money spent episode tomorrow, by the way. I know it's been a little while, so we did it. We'll do another episode checking up a thing, showing you guys what I am doing right now for stubs. But if you guys are brand new to the channel, looking to get better at the game, build a God Squad in Diamond Dynasty, things like that, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. We are uploading daily for the time being. So if you have any questions on things, things like that, don't be afraid to comment them. And we'll see if we can make a video, try to answer your question. I do stream on Twitch every day, going live in the late morning, early afternoon time frame EST. So if you have any questions on things, Things like that, make sure you come stop by the stream, come hang out, just watch me play Diamond Dynasty, whatever the situation is. It's a fun time, and I recommend all you guys swing by the Twitch if you have not already. All right, so Diamond Dynasty, there's a lot to it. You go into the main menu of Diamond Dynasty for the first time. It definitely seems like a lot. It's definitely a little overwhelming. I'm gonna go into detail on everything. I'm gonna show you guys how to get good players, just in general, different things you can do to start building up your team. Also, this is me just explaining all the different avenues, how those things work and how you get players and stubs out of it. And this stuff is gonna be carrying on throughout the year. They'll be adding things. So this stuff right now at the very beginning of the year is very minimal, but as the year goes on, there'll be lots of different things you could do to get good players. We're gonna go into our programs here. So programs are a key way to make stubs, get players, things like that. And there are different a bunch of different types of programs. Essentially a program and that will be a show is just a whole little path for you to follow and you earn a bunch of rewards by completing small tasks and working your way through that path. So let's start off here. First we have our daily moments. I have a video showing how you could evolve this bronze Giambi into an 85 overall for a space Giambi, which is actually pretty solid. Also to show you how to get this Roberto Alomar, essentially you go in there and you complete moments daily. They'll give you these little tasks here. You do a daily moment. You get one, two points. Depending on what the moment is, you work your way up to the right of this program. This one's pretty straightforward. You complete the daily moment. You get a player as you keep progressing through this. <laughs> and as the year goes on, they're going to add better players out of this. Honestly, the Alomar is pretty solid. Now, I can only picture them adding more and more good players out of this. And this will be a solid way for you to easily get good players over time if you're someone who doesn't have the most time to play every day. Hop on, do your daily moment, and keep on chipping at this and help you build up the squad. Now we have our player program. This is another one that is relatively quick. Right now we have one player program. It's Eric Davis, but again, we're going to keep on adding player programs throughout the year. And as of now, they're pretty straightforward. All you do is you go to your program, go to Eric Davis or any of the programs, and you see it's a miniature program inside of it. You got to complete the missions and the tasks to get the player. So here, we had to do all the moments, did all of those. We, you could exchange players if you want to, or you could just do these missions online. This is the general gist of programs. You complete all these things, you will chip your way towards the reward. At the end of the program, you have your reward, and here's the diamond player. They're gonna be adding a ton of these player programs. You already have three of them. While this gold one really isn't that great, it's a good place to kind of start and learn about programs, and this Giambi Evolution program, when you get that bronze one, We'll help you get a nice little first baseman in there as well. And as the year goes on, they're going to add a ton of more diamond players through this. So it's a great way to fill out the squad for sure. Now we have our team affinity. So team affinity is something that they will be building on all year. There are six divisions. Every team will get a themed player. So there are 30 players in here as of now, at least 30 diamond players in this. Every team gets a themed player. So you get this gold flash pack. Every team has a gold flashback. You get a bunch of free packs. You get unlockables, uniforms. You get these 42 series players. And this is going to be what you're going to see all year from Team Affinity. You're going to see high level diamond players for each team come out of this program. And if you're no money spent, or in general, you don't want to spend much money on stubs. You want to build a team for free, for cheap. This is going to be the best way to do it. It's a little bit of a grind. 
It takes a little bit of time, but your team affinity programs will allow you to help you get really good players without really having to pay for stubs. You just kind of kind of grind out the programs and you get good rewards out of it. Packs, players, stubs, things like that. And to explain the program, here are the different avenues you have to complete this program. First, you have your missions. You can complete some missions by using those gold flashback cards. So, you know, if you play Battle Royale events, you get an opportunity to use these cards online. You could even do it offline if you want to. You can get some solid progress for the program. You could also tally innings online and offline. So if you're doing conquest maps and you want to get a division done, tally innings with the players in that division and you'll be able to get some more progress with the program as well. But this is just the gist of it. You also have your moments. You do each moment for each team. You get a little bit of progress. You have a conquest map so you can complete the conquest map, get the rewards for that conquest, but also you get progress for the team affinities for the east, the west, and the central. So you could do progress for two affinities at once by doing this. Then you have March to October, which I don't recommend doing. March to October is a little bit of a grind. It takes a lot of time to get at it. But just in general, I think March to October is solid if you like your franchise modes. And I'd recommend doing it if you want to play the mode. There's no harm in that. But just in general, it does take a lot of time. It's not the most efficient way to get these programs done. But it is indeed a way to get things done the right way. Just in case you want to... You know, play March to October and get some sort of progress for a team, your favorite team, things like that. Then you have your collection. So if you're going for live series collections, these will add progress as well. The more expensive the team, the more points you get for the program. Not a bad way to get players, but again, most people aren't going to go that route. They're going to get those collections over time. And finally, you have your exchanges. So you could exchange players up to three times and you can get progress for the program. This isn't a bad thing. This isn't a bad way to go about it, but you gotta spend stubs to do this. This isn't smart unless you are just trying to pay for these guys. And I really wouldn't recommend doing it until maybe later in the year if you build up a binder of cards. And also you have here your showdown vouchers. You earn these vouchers by completing the team affinity season one showdown. You turn these in here, you get three points for each one ticket you turn in. So if you turn all five tickets into one division, then you will get 15 points of progress for each one showdown you complete. This is why this is the fastest way to beat this. If you get solid at showdown, you definitely should be going for it this route. You get 15 points each. So you do four showdowns, which now will take a few hours if you get them all done first try. You get this. Then here you do two more. You get the level 90 42 series. Then you do two more. You get this one, two more. You get this one and two more of this one. Just in general, as you do the showdowns, it's going to be the most efficient way to get these done. And if you could, I recommend trying it. And I recommend trying it, even if you're not 100% sure how good you are at showdown. It's because it's going to be the fastest way no matter what. And, you know, the risk reward of showdown, definitely worth it. You know, you, you may be risking 500 stubs, but usually make that 500 back. And in general, you will, you, you, you beat the showdown, you will have a profit of stubs. You'll get solid XP and you'll get through this quicker. All right. I know that was a mouthful. That's Team Affinity. It seems like a lot, but the gist of Team Affinity is every team has a theme card. Chip at them over time. They're going to add to this all year. Now we have our monthly rewards. These monthly rewards are things that come at the end of each month. Players get boosted cards based on how they do in real life. Usually they aren't cards that are super crazy. Like they aren't like the best players in the league at all times. These are players that, you know, are good players, but they just give them a boosted card based on how they do IRL. Tops Now cards, which we'll talk about just after here. Those guys are usually not as good as these monthly cards, and they are less popularized names. They aren't going to be the biggest popular names in the game to get boosted Tops Now cards. Usually it's the guys who don't really have a crazy season or just have a crazy moment or stretch of games. They get a Tops Now. The monthly ones are a little bit like that, or mostly you're just players who perform well over an entire month and then you get a very big monthly award for completing that program obviously right now we do not have that yet but we will be getting this sooner rather than later now now the last kind of program we have is our first inning program this is a program that they update every month basically you have a whole bunch of tasks your goal is essentially to get to this boss pack these are going to be some of the better cards in the game right now 93 91 93 overall cards are somewhat better than a lot of the cards, even team affinity wise. But these cards aren't the best by any means, you know. 
But as the year goes on, you know, the older bosses will start to be outdated. They'll keep on building them up. So, you know, this is a great way to either get a good player to keep or to sell for stubs. And this you just complete by getting XP. So there are different avenues to earn XP. If you play Road to the Show, you get XP. If you complete those little ball player programs with your perks and stuff. If you play Diamond Dynasty, play your online games, conquests, things like that, you will get XP from basically playing everything in the game. As long as you're playing something, you'll get XP. There are different methods that are faster than others to get it, but just playing the game will allow you to complete this. Along with doing these tasks, like daily missions, which I don't think help much, it looks like they did better with these. It felt like these daily missions used to do nothing, but now they look a little bit more important, so that's good to do. You have your missions, which are missions over the entire span of the program you can complete over time. You have your moments, which again are just little offline moments you could grind. It's solid progress, you know, you could do these any time of the program. You have your first thing showdown, which they added later. If you, in case you're confused on how to beat this one, I have a video for it, by the way, make sure you check that out. And basically, you look at the, the showdown here, you'll complete the showdown, you'll get progress for that first inning program. Everything under the programs are all tasks you can do to get points for. You get the conquest map as well. Then you have your collections. If you collect and do the, the Eric Davis program, you get 35K. If you collect 42 series, guys, our final avenue of earning cards in the game, at least through offline grinding and things not directly related to online play, we'll go to our moment screen here. Single player moments. You go in here. We can earn players by doing moments, especially these tops now moments. These are, like I said, boosted cards based on the real life things happening in the league. So players who have a great game, crazy moment go down, will get a boosted card. And you look at all of these, you just complete these moments and you get a choice pack. And so if you are new to the game and you're looking to quickly build a squad with some diamonds or sell players with stubs, sell player for stubs, you should be doing these tops now pr moments pretty easy you just complete all the moments and you get a pack and you get a player you could either keep or sell for stubs pretty straightforward they come out with these every single week so now we went over all the, the ways to earn diamond cards to non-online play so just to summarize we have our first inning program which we could grind basically by doing anything in the game and get the bosses and other good players and stubs in there we have our daily moments so we complete a moment daily we can progress towards good players like our Roberto Alomar here. We have our team affinity, which is filled with all the 42 series cards, the 88 overall 42 series that are current players for each team. You have your showdown, which is the most efficient way to get this done. But again, you do have different avenues to beat these and they will be progressively adding on to this throughout the year. Then you have your player program, which again, they will be adding more and more player programs throughout the year. And this is in the simple way to get an easy diamond, you basically just complete that little program. You complete the moments and complete the missions that are assigned with it. And you will get a diamond card for your squad. Then we have our monthly rewards. Finally, we don't have them yet. If they're anything like in years past, you can earn these no money spent. You could earn them offline by grinding, collect those tops now cards too. And you could probably have that help you for this. Just in general, this is through your offline grinding. You do moments, you progressively play through the program. And you'll get yourself a good bunch of diamond players when that comes out. Then finally, we go to our single player in our moments. We have our tops now cards. Complete the tops now moments. You get a choice of the tops now cards. Pretty straightforward. These cards get added each week. And yeah, those are our offline ways of getting cards. So you can also earn good diamond players by playing online. You have different avenues of playing either battle royale, ranked seasons, or events. And you could get diamond cards by playing online. So if you are someone who has a squad built up, say you have a squad like me, f do those team affinities and you start to fill your team with good 88 overall team affinity cards, things like that, start building up the squad. Then you could hop into online modes into ranked seasons. And as you can see, I'm 25 and three. You can see here the featured rewards are those three diamond players, Fielder, Ryan, and Sandberg. You click the ranked season and you see as you go higher up in rating, you earn players. And as the year will go on, you'll be able to earn solid players in your pennant race pack. So you get up to 500 rating, you can get the pennant race award, get up to 900 rating, get the world series reward. These rewards are some of the more expensive ones in the game just because they take time to earn. Not everyone gets these done. 
So once you have a squad and you want to start playing a little bit competitively online, ranked season is the mode. You play a nine inning game with that squad you build up. And obviously you win, you gain points, you lose, you lose points. And you keep working your way through the ranks, hopefully up to World Series or anything past that. Another way to get progress is through the win reward side. So if you tally up wins through ranked seasons, you could still get those packs. You see you get Bond as a habit, five packs, and then you get the World Series reward at the end. So if you get 40 wins in ranked seasons, then you could get this pack too. If you're someone who struggles to make World Series, if you can't clutch up and get up to 900 rating, but you still like playing ranked seasons, maybe not even take it overly serious, and this is the main mode you like to play, you get 40 wins, you get the World Series pack, and you can either keep or sell these players online. The key is since these are online rewards, you can sell them on the market, at least for now. This is the main way you can sell cards, and a good way to make stubs if you play the game a lot or are good at the game is by grinding these online rewards in here. You see, you can get one of these players, which right now are going for about 100K. So if you make World Series, if you get those wins, then you can get like over 100K worth of stubs if you sell these players. So that is ranked seasons and how that works. Next, we have Battle Royale, which has even better rewards. Battle Royale is harder because you draft a 26 man team. You go like online and you have a, a run. So basically you can keep playing with the team until you lose twice. If you click Battle Royale, you have different tiers of awards. So remember, if you lose two games, the run resets and you have to redraft. So if you get up to 12 wins, you get a 90 plus diamond, which is a great way to earn great live series cards as of now. If you manage to get to 12 and 1 or 12 and 0 in your run and so on and so forth, as you get past the goals, get more wins, you get better rewards. And this is the most difficult way to earn cards trying to go 12 now because 12 now is very difficult to get 12 wins without losing is very difficult but if you view the flawless awards you got all these nice diamonds here solid cards now our market see how much they're going for they're going for like about 70 80k so if you want to try to earn these guys you could try to go 12 now hope you get lucky or just generally good enough to go 12 now and you get a diamond through that and also diamonds through getting up to certain levels but keep in mind this is difficult and many times you won't even make it past that six win mark and you make it with no diamonds but that's the risk reward of battle royale on the other side we have our battle royale program so if you play and complete these missions which are just things you could do while playing br you draft these players that they have noted and tally stats with them in your team you will earn progress for the program so if you play each win will add progress if you get to nine plus wins it'll add more points if you go 12 no it'll add points so the better you are at the game the faster you can get these rewards but you should still be able to get this if br is a mode you enjoy take some time play the mode play some runs try to tally up those missions draft the players they need to beat missions for and try to tally those stats even if you don't go 12 no you could beat that and get a nice diamond player at the back end of the program here like or Solaire, who's pretty solid and then you can get the br flawless pack at the very end of it so again the thing that they did great with this year is with ranked seasons and battle royale which are modes that used to only require skill to get those packs now you can earn them by just grinding out those modes tallying a bunch of wins completing the programs and you don't have to be great at the game by any means to do that you could just play the game a lot and just tally up those wins over a long stretch of time now that is the battle royale program we have ranked and battle royale both of these are online modes battle royale is a team that you draft with players you may not have then you have ranked season which is your team that you've been building up all year in a rated ranked game finally we have events this is really the last way to earn diamonds online at least consistently they give you a preset of rules they will be usually shorter games and ranked seasons. Like here, there are three innings. They give restrictions. So if you're slightly building up the team and you know you don't have a God Squad yet, the events are a good way to earn rewards. First of all, like Battle Royale, you have a run. You lose two games, you have to start the team from scratch again, start to run from scratch. So if you get 12 wins without losing twice, you can get an 85 to 89 live series diamond and so on and so forth. You can earn these players by getting good runs and events, and that's a solid way to get good cards. But if you hit the view rewards part here, every event will have a set of rewards. You get a bunch of packs by tallying up wins over time. You can get a diamond John Smoltz by getting the 20 wins for this event. And as in general, you see there are diamond players, diamond things in here that you know you build up over time if you play the event. 
So you just tally up wins, grind this over time, you get all these rewards. And this is a little less stressed than ranked seasons. It's not as sweaty, I guess we could say, as the other two modes. Events are usually more relaxed, not as difficult, and they are shorter games, so you could chip at them over time in some pairs in the rank seasons but again this is a good way to get players in stubs by completing these event here trying to get good rewards try to get good runs for players like that and you can start building up a solid squad so remember you have your three online modes ranked seasons battle royale and events these are the best way to earn players online and just in general making stubs by either keeping or selling them okay finally for I end this video, I have made a good amount of stubs, so I want to quickly update you guys the better methods to be making stubs, especially if you are confused on how to make stubs, if you don't want to sit in the market and flip. The best ways that the way that I get my stubs every year is by playing the game. And it may sound redundant, but you know, I will build up rewards by building up a team of offline players. So, like I said, we go to our programs, I complete our team affinities. Try to build up my team with these cards. And any player that is sellable, I will usually sell. Like the first inning bosses, once you get the boss, you could sell them for stubs. So I sold Fernando Valenzuela for like 50k stubs. Now I could use those stubs for building up the live series collection. If you go to your team of Finney, you get a bunch of rewards out of that. But also, the players are players that you can keep for now. Right now, they're not sellable, but they're free to earn still. Later in the year, you probably will be able to sell some sort of players in these programs. So this would be a solid way to make subs as well. Going through the program, getting those players and eventually selling them. But we don't know if that's the case. That's only if they're sellable later in the year. Right now, they are not. And just use players that are free to earn like this Eric Davis. Things like that. Use the players that you're going to be earning offline for free. And then sell anything that you can. And what I'm doing is spending those stubs to try to get the live series collection. So you go to our collection. We have our live series collections. As you build this up, you will see we get some really good rewards. You collect the entire league, you get a 99 Chipper Jones. Complete the American League, you get a 99 David Ortiz. And for the National League, you get Alfonso Soriano. As you see, as you work your way down, the more teams you collect, the better. So I spend my stubs trying to buy these players off the market or earning them for free. I get lucky get a good run and then use these players for collections i don't buy packs i don't go 12 no i've gone i went 12 12 no last year once and that was actually after i had my collections already done and this year as in general you want to try to get these collections done these are the best players in the game for most of the year so the best thing you can do is allocate your stubs to buying these players be smart with them and use those players like i said you could earn offline for free instead of buying a player off the market or something so yeah, that is going to be it for this video. Hopefully I explained all the different avenues you have to get good cards. Remember, you have your offline modes, your online modes, and also your collections, which I just explained now. That's the beauty of Diamond Dynasty. You could be good at the game and make stubs quick and get good players quick. You could be very mad at the game, but if you play the game a lot, you can build up a solid squad too. Or just in general, even if you are very, very casual, you could chip at building a solid squad throughout the entire year. And even though you may be going slower than other people, you could still get good players just by doing things that tally over time, like say the daily programs. And that is just in general the best ways to earn diamonds other than through packs and buying them directly. Hopefully I answered any sort of question or thing like that that you guys had concerns with. If you have any more questions, like I've been saying, comment them down below. And if I am able to make a, a separate video or just answer those, I definitely try my best to do so. Have a great rest of your day, everyone. Enjoy MLB The Show 21, and I'll see you all in the next video. Deuces.